I'm on a solo trip today to a local hardware store to get some fencing so that I can start a separate pen for our sheep Ram Samson. You might remember from our last video, we've been having some issues with our Ram. He's become very aggressive. There were some thoughts in the comment section that, it, you know, why he was aggressive. Some people even saying it was our fault that he was aggressive. Nonetheless, the Ram is aggressive and he has become dangerous. That's the bottom line. He's not just aggressive to us and we're the ones that feed him. He is aggressive to our two females as well and he doesn't let them get grain he's just mean samson's going to get his own pen he will be separated from the rest of the herd throughout the year and then when we need him for breeding season we will put the females in with him to get the job done we have had some significant unexpected issues at the cabin because of the extreme negative temperatures that we just had for a, about two to three weeks all of our pipes froze in the cabin more than once and joe spent 39 hours literally living in the crawl space thawing out those pipes and then a day and a half later they froze again so he went down there for an additional eight hours i do want to thank you guys for all the suggestions in the comments of how we could try to remedy this situation and what we have come up with is because because our water line is buried 10 feet underground and it's about 115 to 130 foot water line, digging that up to put heat tape around that pipe is just not realistic for us. We, not to mention the fact that we can't dig that up until the spring, early summer when the ground thaws out. So I'm very happy to say that we've purchased an inline pipe heater. Joe has already installed that and it is working like a charm. So it does pull three watts of power per foot and it's about 100 and Joe would know the exact number, but it's like 120, 130 feet. So it's pulling a significant amount of power and you guys know we're on solar. So we're having to use the generator to charge our solar batteries a little bit more than usual, but it is what it is we need water and it's not like we have to do this all year it's just during these cold winter months that we are going to have to use that pipe heater nonetheless it's working great and ever since joe installed it we have not had any more issues with the pipes freezing but today i decided i want to take this off of joe's shoulders so anyway i'm heading up to the local hardware i thought i would take you guys along with me so you can see the comedy show tina building this will be a first On the ground? Well. Right down here, we, yes, we need to take that corner off, but it's going to come around. It's going to wrap right here, Kellen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to nail it into this tree. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go up straight to this tree. Okay. So the path has to be right up against this tree straight up to that next one okay remember shovel smart okay don't make it wider than you have to we just need a trench that we can put that fence line down All right, so I am well aware that this little fenced area that I'm making for Samson is not gonna be beautiful. It's not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna be cute. It's not gonna look like anything 
that Joe would build. Snow and ice makes everything that much harder. If none of this white stuff was out here, it would be so much easier to just wrap this fencing around the trees, nail it in with some U-nails. You know, you might have to saw a few roots that are coming out of the ground or whatever, but it's a lot of work. I mean, this is the path that we already dug. This is probably, I don't know, 15, 20 feet long. And as you can see, it's like, I mean, this is, I'm five, five. So it's five, five to six feet of snow in certain parts of this pasture. Thank God for Kellen. He is a workhorse. Parker's inside trying to get school done for the day. That's why he's not out here yet. He will come and help us when he's done. But Kellen knocked out his schoolwork first thing this morning. So he came out to help me and he's good at shoveling and he likes to shovel snow. Little weirdo. <laughs> so okay, he's a, I help you. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. See you later. He's a great help, but we are doing a, um, I basically got two rolls of 50 foot fencing. So a hundred feet total and he's going to get a little fenced area. And then I need to do some kind of just a makeshift shelter for him. Just simple. This is just temporary. So probably three sides and a roof on it out of plywood or something. Put some hay in there that way he can get out of the snow. And as we head into spring, we start getting more rain. He can get out of the rain, but these sheep are really hardy. They're a hardy breed, you know, negative 40 doesn't even phase them. So he'll do well, but I do always like to have a shelter for my animals so they can get out of the elements if they want to. We're getting there after this, this little trail right here, we're working on, we should be close to be, being done with the shoveling and hopefully getting the fencing going. We'll see. All right, so I think the boys and I have a pretty good trail cleared for this fencing. So obviously this fencing is gonna be a little wonky, right? Like you typically with this kind of fencing, it, it makes it easier if you're just running it along a flat surface. However, we don't, we're not working with a flat surface here. Um, even though the snow is cleared, his area is actually built up on a little bit of a hill. So it's gonna be kind of wonky, but I don't really care. As long as it keeps his little butt in, and keeps him from ramming us, I don't care. So I think we're ready to start nailing in this fencing and the boys are gonna do the best to hold it tight for me as I hammer in these U-nails and hopefully get this little mini pasture enclosed for Samson. Sure, I need you to- I'm watching Okay, you here. need to watch for Samson because he's trying to come around this trail to get me. The girls are coming over here. Yeah, but if the girls come over here, Samson will come over here. I know. Because he gets mad when they come near us. Alright, I need, um, I'm going to need both of you guys over here. Oh, yeah, Parker, grab the hammer and nails now. Alright. Okay. One of you is going to get the top, one of you is going to get the bottom, and I need you guys to pull, like, to where you're sitting down. Like, I need you to pull with all your might. Because we have to pull this as tight as we can. I'm going to get the top. Once it's tight, as tight as we can get it, I'm going to nail it into the tree. Okay? Let loose. One, two, three. Pull as hard as you can. Harder, harder. You got it. Hold it. Good, let loose. Oh, good That's job, boys. Tight mm -hmm. enough, you know? It'll work for now. All right, ready? One, two, pull. 
Up against the tree, leaning up against the tree. Ready, pull. One, two, three, pull. That you're curious, I know oh, that you're help. strong, but life can be furious and things can go wrong. You go, you go, we're better off tomorrow, but who knows, who knows if we get joy or sorrow. Ooh, stay true to the fire in your heart and your soul don't trench your desire in what you can't control we fly we fly well good morning friends the boys and i worked until dark last night we were out here with headlamps on, but we got Samson's little pen all finished. Joe came out at the very end and helped me capture Samson and put him in there. And uh, we're heading out this morning to see if he's still in it. <laughs> uh, like I said, it's not the prettiest thing, but it is getting the job done. And I'm really excited. Even the girls, our U's were like, kind of like sketched out like what we can like do whatever we want and we don't have to worry about Samson ramming us. They were so excited to get grain and uh, I'm going to get them some grain this morning but to not be headbutted by him constantly and have to fight to get the grain which they desperately need those things because they should both be pregnant. It's probably going to be really nice for them. So let's get up here and see if Samson made it through the night. Hey big boy. I can hear something in the corner. <laughs> So this is his little pin. It just goes down around this uh, spruce tree here and then up and around a couple birch trees. And it just makes kind of a huge, almost like a circle octagon. A lot of it's taken up by snow, obviously. This is all snow. So normally when this is melted, this would all be open and flat for him. And you can see the girls over there. Hi, Naomi, good morning. It is so weird being able to walk in here without having to worry about Samson. This is amazing. I am so excited and it's just in time right before the lambs are born. Hi! Hi girl! Hi! Oh, I can come in and love on you. Yes, and pet you and stuff. Hi beautiful. Hi! <laughs> You look much calmer. Yes. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, my Naomi girl. Hi, how's it feeling, huh? Not having to worry about all Samson. <laughs> oh. oh, you're being a lover this morning. There's Esther. So Esther is a little bit sketchy still. She's not as friendly as Naomi. <laughs> I know, they see you, Naomi. But we're gonna train her and we're gonna work with her. Our sheep, Delilah, that we had in Virginia, she came from a huge flock of over 300 sheep and she had never been handled. So talk about skittish. But we worked with her and as you guys might remember from my video that I shared our milking routine in the morning, she was great. We not only could touch her and handle her, but I was able to get her up in the milk stanchion every morning and milk her. And it was just wonderful. It just goes to show with a little bit of time and commitment that you can really train any animal to do these things. So it's pretty exciting. So Esther's going to need a little bit more work. She's friendly. You know, she'll let you pet her, but she's just kind of sketched out. And um, Naomi is a sweetheart, though. She's she's not afraid of us. Are you mad? He won't even come near me now. I have no doubt that, you know, he's protective. He probably can sense that the females are pregnant and he's protective. Um, you know, that we got so many comments on the last video. Some of you are sheep farmers and gave us some great advice. And some of you blamed us for the fact that he's aggressive, <laughs> which is fine. 
I will have you guys know, we have raised cows, we have raised sheep, but we've never had a ram on our farm. So when we got our females before, they were already pregnant and we just, we didn't have time to really get a ram or figure out how we were gonna do the next breeding season because we sold and moved to Alaska. You learn as you go. I mean, we're just kind of like jump in and figure it out kind of people. I'm not afraid to try new things. And um, some of you said, you know, since we pet him, and touch him and things like that, that that makes him aggressive. Well, the thing is, is Samson was two years old before we bought him. We got him from a another sheep breeder here in Alaska. And so I don't know how he was raised, right? And um, he was good up until breeding season and he got very aggressive and he just kind of stayed that way. So um, I don't really have any intentions on getting rid of him, obviously. If he's a huge problem and we can't contain him, we'll just put him in the freezer and raise up another ram lamb and, uh, you know, hope, hoping that that one is a little bit more docile and manageable. But I don't foresee this being an issue. He's in a separate pen now. He is happy. He's fed and watered. The only thing we have left to do today is we do need to build him just a little makeshift shelter so he can get out of the elements. But I think he's good. He can stay in his own little apartment. You know what I'm saying? And every breeding season, we can just let the ewes in with him so he can do his business and all will be well. And I am so excited that this got done before next month because next month is when the lambing should start. That's a big boy. Oh yeah, look at that, Samson. See, you're gonna get grain. You don't need to be a meanie head and steal it from the girls. Yeah. Oh, sorry, was I not supposed to touch his nose? Yeah, Joe, you're not allowed to touch his head. <laughs> Have we said we're not allowed to touch his head? I mean, I'm pretty sure the damage is done yep. at this Doesn't point, so it's whatever. I'm not scared of him. Bradley, what are you doing? Girls can come get their grain. Don't have to worry about Samson. I'm so happy, Parker. <laughs> we get to come out and see them now. Oh, she's just the biggest sweetheart. She's gonna be such a good mama. And I'll tell you guys, I'm feeling it this morning. I'm not 23. <laughs> I will be 42 in May. And this is a lot of work. I mean, there's a reason that Joe and I make a good team and we just tag team this stuff. So doing all of this without Joe, I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was pretty rough. I went in last night, my hands were aching so bad just from shoveling and sawing because we had to cut through so many roots to get the fencing down to the ground level. And uh, it, it was rough. My lower back was hurting. You know, it's just a lot of work. So I am 100% in support of the God given gender roles. Joe does the heavy lifting, Joe does all the man stuff, and I take on the stuff with the kids and the bills and the doctor's appointments and the cooking and things like that. And we accept the roles that we're good at. But I think it was really nice for me to be able to get out here and just take this off of Joe's plate because he's had a lot going on. Who's this, Parker? Peachy. Peachy. <laughs> Hi, Peachy. You ready for some fermented grains this morning? And some mealworms. <laughs> <laughs>
I wonder which two are laying. We have two chickens that are laying every day now. Give me some time. Give me some time to get stronger. I'll be okay. Just give me a little bit longer. Yeah, we're gonna win. The struggle we're in. It's never goodbye. It's never goodbye till it's over. Come back to love I was so crazy to lose you Just come back to love Let's never do what we used to Leaving without saying Teasing without playing I've had enough So come back to But here I am reaching my arm out I want us to win The struggle we're in It's never goodbye It's never goodbye till it's over Or B, look what you did. He's like, I don't care. Yes, Throw the ball, Joe. Oh, Gunner's smart. He knows. Drop. Good. Gunner, drop. All right, our bellies are full and school is done. We're back up here in the sheep pasture and we're gonna knock out this quick little DIY shelter for Samson.
Good morning, friends. We are here in town today. I did not film this morning because it was pitch black dark outside. That's how early we had to come into town. I don't know how I feel about it, if I'm too happy about it, because I am not a morning person. I repeat, I'm not a morning person. I had to get up so early all my life with the military and getting Parker out to daycare and like all the things before I had to be to work. Like, I don't do that anymore. So to have to get up and go to town this early, it's just, mm, just, I'm a little cranky pants. I'm, gonna go, I'm a little cranky pants, but I have some really exciting news. So we have decided to finally invest in an actual plow for Joe's truck. You guys know we have our Polaris Ranger, our side-by-side. -side. We did get a plow for that before we came to Alaska because we live in a very, very snowy area. We get more snow out where we live than they do here in town. We've probably gotten anywhere from six to eight feet of snow already this year. And plowing is a constant thing for Joe in the wintertime, as we've shared with you guys before. And while the plow and the Polaris has done the job, the job so far, it's constantly breaking. Joe's having to buy new parts. He's having to weld things like, and the Polaris is just not powerful enough to push and move the amount of snow that we have. And it's just, it's honestly been drama. We haven't shared too much of that on the channel, but behind the scenes, that's kind of what's been going on. And the thing with Joe, you know, I get it. He likes to save money and he doesn't like to spend money when he doesn't have to. And I don't either, but I'm the type of person, there are some things that are just worth investing in. And, you know, when Joe goes out to plow, it takes him all day sometimes, five, six hours to plow because we have an extremely long driveway and then he plows around the whole cabin. And I know with a real plow attached to his truck, he could get that done so much faster and it would be more permanent. It wouldn't break as easily. And I just think that it's an investment that's worth making. So I finally talked him into getting a plow on the truck and I know he's secretly excited. I'm like, are you excited about your plow? And he's like, yeah. That's all you get from Joe, but he's excited. I can tell. I can see that little twinkle in his little blue eyes. So that's what we're doing today. We just dropped the truck off and they're installing the plow. They say it could take all day. So we are going to get breakfast with the boys. We're here at IHOP and then we're gonna do a couple errands that we have to do. And then we're gonna surprise the boys and take them to the fun center and let them play for an hour. They've been such good boys for us and we just wanna reward them and do something fun for them while we're in town.
that lightning bolt. Oh, Snoke is okay now. You like it? Yeah. You look so handsome. Joe, that's not black coffee. Do you want to tell our friends what kind of coffee you get? Your manly coffee? Oh, it's black coffee. That is so not black coffee. Tell the truth, Joe. It's black coffee. Joseph, what? don't be ashamed of who you are. I don't know what you're talking about. Embrace it. <laughs> Babe, that is most definitely a grande white black coffee. <laughs> It's a white chocolate mocha. It's most definitely a grande white black coffee. <laughs> white chocolate mocha, <laughs> extra hot, half sweet with just two pumps of syrup and some whipped cream. Ain't it, Joe? I don't even know what you just said. It doesn't make you less of a man, babe, just yeah. because you drink mochas. No, it does. I get the Grande Caramel Brulee Latte, half sweet with only two pumps of syrup. I don't see how they do four pumps of syrup because it's already sweet with just two pumps. And four pumps, it's like the whole thing is just syrup. It's, I can't drink it like that. I get whipped cream and no candy on top because with the Caramel Brulee Latte, they put like these little candies on the top and they're fine at first, but the more they soak in the coffee, they get all mushy and one time I got to the bottom of the coffee and I took a drink and I swallowed a bunch of them and I didn't, I thought I was eating like curdled milk or something. I didn't know what it was. So I'm like a texture person. I can't, I can't do the chunky stuff in my coffee. So that's what Joe and I like to get. And the boys, some of you asked, what did the boys get? Boys, what do you guys get from Starbucks? Strawberry refresher. Yep. Strawberry refresher with either lemonade or apple juice.
Well, that was super fun. I'm pretty sure I was born in the wrong profession. I think I was meant to be a NASCAR driver. What do you think, Joe? Hey, I think so. Like, just call me Tina Gordon. Tina Earnhardt. Hey, yeah. Me. Boys, did you have fun? Yeah. Don't want to sleep tonight at all Just want to watch them stars fall But you don't want to try to make up dreams Just to be seen I want to lay here beside you Oh, quiet All right, it's been a long day of errands, but Joe's truck should just be about done. And so we're gonna head on over there to get it picked up and head home. Thankfully, Lexi lives in town, so we were able to kind of hang out at her place after we were done with errands because we had to waste time. We had like three hours to spare and we didn't want to drive all the way back to the cabin just to turn around and drive all the way back when they called us and told us it was ready. So we just kind of hung out in town all day, but it is about time to go pick it up. Dang, look at that thing, Joe. Woo. Are you excited? Looks good, babe. You can be able to plow much faster now. Yellow remote there. Oh snap. Look at that. Very cool. You'll figure it out eventually. Don't think you're all cool. <laughs>
See, this is a problem. I knew this is why you wanted to stay in the car. Can you just go get us a table? So, don't look at me. But now I feel you looking at me, even though you're not looking at me. Like you're looking at me, not looking at me. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no for real. I cannot. Like, can you guys just all get out of here now? Out, so I can do an intro. Out, out, out. <laughs> why are you always messing around, Joe? No. Okay, I just caught you sniffing the book on camera. That is oh, weird. It's a new book. Smell no, it. you don't smell. Stop it. People are going to see you. What are you doing? Oh, why are so oh, wow. See, you try to be funny. Look at you. You ruined the shot, Joe. Look at that. You mean a mess. Oh, look at them eyebrows. Oh. Mm -mm. Babe, do the rifleman. The rifleman. Let me see. Just pretend. The rifleman. <laughs> what does the fox say? Ring ding 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 ring ding 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 ding. ding. That's terrifying. <laughs> this is a beaver. Aw, oh, babe. You made me snow stairs. That way I won't slip and fall coming down the hill. Look at that. I said I'm sick of shoveling and here you are making snow stairs. <laughs>